This episode is brought to you by our friends at Hover, the easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. Get 10% off today by visiting hover.com slash gadget TV. Hi, this is Andrew Moore Crispin for Gadget TV on Butterscotch.com, and today we have the Nook Color uh, running Honeycomb. So you can get the Nook Color itself for $249, uh, plus another 40 or 50 for a 4 gigabyte or better Class 4 or better micro SD card. Now all of the Honeycomb operating system is actually running from the micro SD card, which is behind the little door on the back here. Uh, before we get started, we're going to uh, power this thing down and actually do a, a time up for the boot. So the power button's on the side here, hold that down, power it off. So now we're going to hit the power button and see how long this thing takes to boot up. So that was 52 seconds from actually hitting the power button to uh, getting the lock screen on Honeycomb. You can drag the lock uh, icon out here to actually get into the operating system itself. Now I should point out that uh, while all too often when you're shoehorning a version of Android or really anything, when you're hacking a device to make it do something it wasn't in originally intended to do, you make a lot of sacrifices. This is version 4 of Deeper Blue's uh, Honeycomb for Nook. Uh, power management's working, so you won't actually have to go through that power-up process uh, too often. Um, so power management's working, uh, Wi-Fi obviously working, uh, sound is working, and it really is a, a, a uh, basically a full-featured uh, honeycomb experience. Now, the Nook Color wasn't originally intended to run this, obviously. Um, the Nook Color software is based on Android, but it was never intended to actually be a full Android tablet. Um, so you will see a little bit of uh, slowdown and you know, not, not um, exactly the most responsive experience in the world. But in all honesty, I've been using this thing for about a week now, um, and I found it to be a pretty easy thing to overcome. So here you can see we have our five um, honeycomb ha home screens. We can slide between them like this. We can add a widget at any time, so let's go to a blank home screen here, touch and hold, and now we're presented with this, um, this screen. So we can slide through widgets here, and we'll see new widgets uh, appearing in this list as we, apply, as we um, install applications. So when you first start up, you have uh, an email widget, a uh, bookmarks widget, and the analog clock that we've all seen. Um, we can also add shortcuts for uh, contacts. Um, we can add, in this case, the market. Uh, we'll get to the market in a moment. So we can also add app shortcuts to any of our home screens. Uh, obviously, no camera on the Nook, so that one's not going to be working too well. should also point out that the gallery uh, isn't working at all. Uh, it'll basically uh, immediately force close. reason for that is in the uh, current dev build of Honeycomb, uh, that's not working. So that's not Deep Blue's fault. That's just, uh, just the way it is right now. So you can't use the gallery. You can still do things like, um, let's see, we'll add uh, G tasks, or actually let's add, add latitude. To. Now we'll see it uh, pop up into this screen here. So we can add uh, any applications we want to. We'll add maps here. We'll add uh, contacts. Like I say, you can just add um, whatever apps you want here. We can also, if we tap on wallpapers, we can see some of the wallpaper options that we have here. Now pictures won't be working, obviously, because um, we can't use the gallery. But we do have options uh, to go to some of our wallpapers here. So we can select, uh, as it stands right now, there's only a couple. There's also live wallpapers. Would advise against using those, especially on the Nook Color. Um, not a uh, powerful enough device to really uh, let you take advantage of those. Stupid feature anyway, in my opinion. Now we can also, you see here we have more, so we can um, choose to uh, add a Gmail label, for example. If we tap that one, it'll go onto our home screen. We could uh, choose our work uh, email or you know, anything marked bills or whatever. Now the nice thing about Honeycomb is anytime you're shoehorning a build of Android onto a device that was never really intended to run Android, um, you, you will have some weird issues with button mapping. Um, so the Nook is no exception. We have but one button. Well, we ha do have a couple of others, but I'm saying uh, we only have the one button on the face here. And this is our home button. This works in Honeycomb. also works uh, on the Nook color itself. Uh, on, an, on an Android phone, we would have, um, and indeed the operating system is built to have, capacitive or some other kind of button here, uh, search, settings, a home and a back button. Um, one really nice thing about Honeycomb is that it's actually those buttons, because we have a little bit more screen real estate to work with, are actually in the bottom here now. So we can go back, we can go home, we can uh, open multitasking and do all this kind of stuff. We can also open our Wi-Fi settings and uh, check our battery life and all this kind of stuff by just tapping on the, uh, the bottom here. So like I said, the, hit the Nook button and we'll actually go home.
The major hurdle to Honeycomb on the Nook color is that uh, the build of Android that you will be putting on your micro SD card in behind here doesn't actually have the Android market. Um, so you'll actually have to go through uh, quite a few um, fairly complicated steps in order to get the market on there. It took, took about an hour. I'm sure uh, if you're more computer savvy, you can, you can get it done faster. Less, less savvy, you'll have to be following all of the tutorials and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it is, it, it's basically, uh, we did it on the Mac, and it's a lot of um, terminal hacking and, and uh, you know, getting the Nook to be recognized in terminal and actually um, you know, forcing uh, different little images, APKs, onto the uh, Nook color. But the end result is that we actually do have, uh, if we tap apps here, we actually do have the market. Let's see here, right here. Now one thing I, first thing I tried to install, um, just I get maybe as an homage to the, to the Nook color, was the uh, Nook software so I could read whatever books I've purchased on the Nook, on the, uh, the Nook color running um, honeycomb. Strangely enough, it's not on there. Um, so you will find a few, uh, a few little kind of snafus like that where you know, not all of the apps are going to be available to you. But believe me, um, going through the initial trouble to get the Google apps like Gmail and Maps and, uh, and uh, navigation and all that kind of stuff, plus the Android market onto the Honeycomb device, uh, it's definitely going to be worth it. Um, otherwise, you'll have to go through that process anytime you want to add any app. You'll have to uh, basically get the Nook recognized, um, push the APK onto the device. So you can see here we have access to uh, pretty close to a, a full market. We can tap on any app that we want, um, get a bit of an idea of what it's all about, choose to install. And as I mentioned before, we can use the back button here. So that's really nice to not have to just go home and then go back into the market. Um, you can see here basically any of the apps. These will be running in uh, more or less a smartphone mode. The best way to show you that is to go into uh, Gmail here. So if we open up our Gmail, you'll see that we're, uh, we're basically looking at a much wider view of our, um, of our Gmail. Now, as the Android market is updated to really ha take advantage of Honeycomb apps, we will be seeing things like split screen in, in more and more applications uh, built for Honeycomb. As it stands right now, we're just getting a larger view on uh, existing Android apps. So there you have it, what I would argue is the best sub $250 uh, Honeycomb tablet going. Got to add in the uh, 40 bucks for the micro SD card, making it uh, still uh, arguably the best Honeycomb tablet sub $300 that's available out there. So that's a quick look at the Nook Color running Honeycomb Android 3.0. For Gadget TV, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin. For more sweet stuff, visit Butterscotch.com. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Hover, the easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. Get 10% off today by visiting hover.com slash gadgettv.